Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cocktails and Rocktails. We're doing this again in our, what was that Kim Basinger movie? <laughs> Not Jessica Rabbit, but, um, oh, you guys, I said it the last time. But we're doing this TikTok style today because I'm just pressed for time, but I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Because you guys are friggin' awesome. And if you don't know, welcome back to Cocktails and Rocktails with me, your most notorious groupie author of this little guy right here. And these books as well, where you can get them, are down in that description. So go down, fiddle about, touch a few things, press a few buttons. You'll get a lot of joy, and so will I. Hmm. I like mutual joy. <laughs> anyway, as always, I always like to say thank you so much to everybody for being here, for making this channel, for really communicating, for being so patient with me because I suck at answering emails, especially I've just been so crazy, stupid, busy lately. So thank you guys so much for all the love, all the support, all the patience, the kindness, the friendships, the conversations, everything you guys do here for sharing the videos everything you guys friggin rock and because you guys rock we are going to do a q a today now today's episode is going to be a little short and sweet because at five o'clock i've got a little something something i've got to do and that's interview dd Dee Dee. Dee Dee williams diana you guys i've already had her on a couple times we're going for a third time because she has tons of stories just like i do i mean hers are never ending just like mine Every time we think we're at the end, it's like, oh, yeah, don't you remember? So it's going to be short and sweet. And because it's short and sweet, we're just going to have a quick little shot of this stuff. My favorite little whiskey in one of our little cuppy cups here. So everybody, grab your suntories, kick up your feet, and let's have a little cocktails and question tails. Cheers, big ears. It does have that bite that I like, but it's a smooth bite. So I always like it. All right, so let's jump into the questions here, you guys. Now, I got one about, this is the first one, and this is a really good question. I don't know too much about it, but it is a good question because it kind of goes with a previous episode that I had done. Um, has social media destroyed the groupie life? And this question kind of goes with that. So this is what about NDAs and groupies, which rockers, musicians, pop stars, whatever, make groupies sign NDAs? Is that something that would go with the groupie life these days? And you know what? With social media and stuff, I don't think it's far off. And especially with things like going on with Rammstein and, you know, other people that society today can take wrongly in the voice of victims being heard because I 100% stand by all victims. But with an NDA, because of what's going on, stories can be twisted around really quick. People's lives can be ruined really quick. You know, in my time, this is, and this is one thing that can cause those NDAs is because social media, media because of that disconnect, because of that distrust that can go on these days, without that human connection that's built over time, over time. And yes, in rock and roll, you have to build that human trust, human connection kind of quick, but you get to know who's worth that trust and who's not. So do NDAs happen? I have absolutely no doubt. I hear people like Justin Bieber, Usher, um, Lil Wayne, people, you know, kind of the bigger tours and stuff. That may happen. I don't know if that would happen with someone like, I don't know, Robert Plant, Metallica. Because, you know, we're all old school. And I think the NDA is something that's kind of relatively newer over the past 20 years, which is relatively new to the groupie life and rock and roll and stuff. Because, yeah, there's so many people. And I wrote a book. They all knew about it. I made sure they all knew about it. And I have a YouTube channel. They all know about it. You know, so that's one thing that to have someone from your past when you were a different person and stuff come back. But these days, because people need to be so protective of their privacy, either it's, you know, depending on the level of fame, say you're Janet Jackson and you do like to imbibe in the groupie life because there's male groupies too, then possibly she would definitely probably have someone sign that because she wants it private she's had enough of her life being dragged through the media and stuff justin bieber would have a lot to protect you know the backstreet boys might have a lot to protect so i think these days it's kind of a weighing the options either you're gonna do the nda 
or you're just not going to partake in the groupie life. So I think part of that distrust that comes with social media, that comes with being detached, absolutely 100% does affect the groupie life and NDAs could come into play. I think they would be more common these days than they would during mine. Would I sign one? Who? No. No, if someone doesn't trust me, especially someone that already knows me, you know, I don't think if I was to partake in that anymore, I mean, I still go out and hang out with my friends, have dinner and stuff, and that requires no DNA. And if I do choose to do anything, that requires no DNA, but I don't choose. Anyway, we're getting into a part of my life I'm not going to talk about right now. But so, yeah, I think the NDA, I don't know if I would sign one, to be honest. Because I don't think I would be going for any new musicians and any musicians that I may hang out with and, you know, behind closed doors, I think would know me and trust me enough, even with the channel, even with my book. And even they would, they would trust me to talk about it in a decent way. So I would not sign an NDA, but I could 100% see why some people want it. In this day and age, I can 100% see why um, they would need it, you know? If it's being used for nefarious reasons, like if you're, you know, R. kelly someone, yeah, if you feel compromised or, like, there's something, you're going to sign this NDA because something dirty is going down, something wrong is going to go down, no, don't sign it. But... I can see why guys needed to protect themselves. And yes, it does affect the groupie life, you know? All right, next question. More stories about Eric Carr. Okay, girl, I'll come back with some more stories. I don't have too much with Eric Carr. He was pretty early in my groupie career. He passed away, you know, unfortunately, within a few years of me knowing him. Um, no, probably about six years. But he was a lot of fun, but he wasn't someone that I wanted to hang out with a lot and maybe vice versa he had his girlfriend Carrie on the road after that a lot so but I do have more Eric Carr stories so I will come back at you with more okay <laughs> now I'm gonna get into a couple that were meant to be little snide remarks hmm. one of them why did no rocker marry you who's to say they didn't ask hold on okay I'm back so why did no walker marry me because I said no because if anybody knows me, if you've watched my channel long enough, you know my theory is rock stars are wonderful human beings. I have great friends. They've made wonderful love lovers, and I'm not just talking in the sheets. I'm talking in a whole because lover is something more than physical. But they've made wonderful love lovers, great friends. They're very protective, very respectful, but they make shit husbands. So I never wanted to marry one. So that's why it was my choice. You know, you might have made that as a slam, but... You know, you kind of come and slam me when you're not actually paying attention to anything I say. You're just here slamming for someone that you are seduced by. By the facade and not by the reality. So that's the reality. Because rock stars are wonderful people. They're wonderful friends. They don't judge me. I feel safe, comfortable, respected, protected with them. But I do not want to marry one. Ooh, uh oh. Nope. All right, so next question kind of falls into why this person was asking, because the second part of their question was, you know, Scammy Lespar, she married a rock star. Well, that was her goal, and to me, that's, you know, kind of messed up that that's the goal is to marry one. No, you know, it's just seeing what happens. It's going with the flow, man, and so what? She married one. That was her goal. That's what she wanted. That's not what I wanted. Different groupies want different things, so. Okay, and the second part of the question goes, it was kind of the same question, um, same statement, I should say, that from the same person, kind of a follow up because, you know, everybody's goal in life is to marry a rock star and be that woman at home, right? No, some of us have other goals. Some of us want other things. And some of us don't believe all the brouhaha that's put out there because 
I get that the groupy world to people who are not part of it or who are new to it is very limited to the 70s because that's the only bullshit that's been done. And Pamela DeBar said, this is what they said, Scammy Les Pars said the, the groupie scene died in the 80s after John Lennon was taken away from us by the, you know, all that happened. Because all of a sudden security became so much tighter. Bullshit. She wasn't around in the 80s. She was married and a mom by then. She's never hung around with Metallica, Megadeth, U2, Poison, Def Leppard, Motley Crue. You know what I mean? She was not part of that scene. And what she doesn't realize, yes, women were very coming along. Like in the 70s, until the mid to late 70s, you, a woman could not have her own credit card without a man signing. A woman could not have a lease without the man signing. A woman could not have... Um, get a loan or anything she her jobs were very limited so in the 80s we were feeling that impact and the groupie pendulum if anything it swung to its pinnacle because women were the, like i always say for the first time they were competing for those for the high salary ceo positions in the in the um male dominated businesses and the world they were breaking out of being t teachers and nurses and you know, secretaries and becoming the VIPs and becoming the CEOs, becoming the presidents of divisions, becoming the area managers. So the women in the 80s, it didn't die by any means. Her groupie life died before the 80s. That's a fact. Yes. But did the groupie scene in the 80s, because I guess she said this on one of her VH1 specials. No, the groupie scene was at its best in the 80s because women were making their choices we chose to bed and fled bed him see you next time we were easier to kind of play the band game like a lot of men did you know and still men get applauded for it and women get degraded for it i see all the time like someone was like woo talking about this man and this woman that's kind of on trial right now in new york city and both the meaning the man and the woman saying who is isn't that a hot mess room of messy stds well, just because she was in the strip life or the sex industry, she's going to be a, be degraded as a woman? No. So in the 80s, we took that degradation and said, fuck you. We're going to live our lives. And as groupies, we went out and chased those rockers. We didn't wait for them to come to us. We went and chased them. We went and got them. We went and left them. We went on tour with them. We made our own monies. We did not need a fucking thing from them. We didn't want to marry them. They were our toys from the candy store. And some great friends. They are the most wonderful human beings. Don't get me wrong. So, but the groupie scene in no way, just because Scammy Les Parr says it does, doesn't mean it's true. There's a lot of things she says after her groupie career that isn't true. She wasn't there. She doesn't know. And I, like I said, I get that people don't realize because every groupie story that's ever told in a documentary is very limited to LA ladies and people that Scammy Les Pars knows. I was surprised she went and uh, interviewed uh, Sweet Connie, but she couldn't deny Sweet Connie anymore. Even she put Sweet Connie down for her choice of how she wanted to be a groupie. So no, Pamela DeBars knows nothing about the groupie scene after the, after outside of LA or after her experiences in it. So she would know nothing about the 80s. Her book came out in the 80s. She was 40. She was not part of the scene. She was a mom. She was tucked away in her little hole in LA. If anything, like I said, the 80s, we took it to the fucking pinnacle. We made it our. We flipped it on those rock stars. We did it better than the rest. So good that no other groupies could make a scene like we did. We made a scene like the 70s girls did. The 70s girls made a scene like the 60s girls did. So on, so on, so on. But 80s and 90s, blam. Couldn't top us. <laughs> I know that sounds egotistical but talk to the other ladies you know and of course we lived it we're gonna say that it was our favorite era it was the best era but for women in general it was the best era era because it was the first time in history we were just calling our lives our own and we didn't need to or want to or have to have marriages or babies or all that stuff it was our first time we were free from that shackle so and yeah the 80s groupies were pretty fucking badass. 
go down for all you new people. Go look at Diana. Go look at um, Desiree, my sisters. Go look at Melody. Go look at a lot of the women I talk to. Kristen, Marie, Danny's in there. Go look at what we have to say. And even listen to Oris's, a roadie that I've known since I was his first tour, Winger, which we all know about the Winger story. <coughs> <laughs> if you don't go find the winger story it's one of the first ones i told so um yeah so 80s i think it was the best time for groupies because it was really the most freeing time for women we had known in history at, up until that point okay and then last question because like i said this is gonna be short and sweet today because i've got to interview diana at 5 p.m it's gonna be so much fun i can't wait to hear what she's gonna say i just let her talk because she's got so many good stories I'll let her tell him. All right. And the last one I've kind of answered down in the in the notes, but in the comments. But what about James Heffield's new tattoo with Lemmy's ashes? It's very egotistical of him. I can see why he wants he and Lemmy were close. A bunch of Lemmy's friends, close friends, did get a small cask of the ashes like that. Um, so... And then they're going to be interred in a couple other places. The Bloodfest, I think, are going to inter some of Lemmy's ashes. But, yeah, look, James was one of the people that got Lemmy's ashes. And he put it on the tattoo of Lemmy, you know, the motorhead symbol of the spade on his finger. Now, having myself talked to a few tattoo artists that I know, and another friend and I who were having a discussion about it because she sent me the link, she talked to a few tattoo artists in L.A. that she knows. No tattoo artist worth their fucking salt who isn't a star fucking ass kisser would use human remains, even ashes, in the ink of a tattoo. And here's why. Because if anybody's seen human ashes, I just had to separate my father's ashes into five different little mini urns for my siblings up at my sister's house. And I was wearing gloves, using a plastic spoon. I'll put a picture of me <laughs> No, I won't. <laughs> Pretending I was eating them, but human remains, once your body is decomposed or cremated, you can have severe reactions to that. And they may not be immediate because there are health limitations. There are, I don't know if there's laws, but there's definitely that every tattoo artist that we spoke to, because I kind of wanted to get the tattoo artist perspective on this. They would not do it because of those reactions, because you don't know how that ink is going to mix with the ashes, because ashes of a human being are not silky, those ashes that just kind of push into your hand that could easily mix into a, an ink. No, they're gritty. They're bony. There are bone fragments in those ashes. So if any... I mean, it's it's just kind of hard to explain because, like I said, no tattoo artist worth their salt. So, you know, James got it from one of his probably girlfriend's ass kissing friends that he got ooh, that he got the A tattoo from. So that's probably where he got it. Someone who didn't who just rather, you know, kiss James Hetfield's ass than do what was right under health guidelines. Because like I said, it may not be tomorrow, but it may be a week from now, and it may never happen. But severe skin reactions and blood reactions can happen to with human ashes or human remains. Ask a necrophiliac. Huh. Yep. There's a whole story that Charlotte Dobray told about that. So that's kind of my opinion on that. I don't think any, and I know some of the world's best tattoo artists, you know, because they've done a lot of rock stars and stuff. And um, there's a, a Sharon from ASI Tattoo here, here in Salt Lake City. You'll see a lot of her artwork on rock stars. So she didn't kiss ass to nobody. And she would not. Like I said, we've both talked to a few tattoo artists, me and my friend, another girl who's been in the rock business for a long time that's not phased by the rock stars like some people might be, you know, like James's girlfriend's friends, because I'm sorry, they're all a bunch of star fuckers. So anyway, but yeah, hopefully he won't get any, and I see why he did it, so Lemmy could be a part of him, because they were close, because he thought it was a cool idea, but that's James. He's with people that don't exactly necessarily think properly or with his own best interest at heart 
or with a logical mind. So hopefully nothing will happen to that tattoo. Hopefully there will be no reaction to the cremated remains. Hopefully, you know, as Keith Richards, his membranes, when he snorted his dad, his membranes burned. And they were like that for a while because you have fucking reactions. But he could rinse it out. Can't with that tattoo. Mm. We'll see. A lot of people have allergic reactions to ink, you know, and that can alter the chemical makeup of the ink that you would might normally not have an allergic reaction. So do I think, oh, cool, yeah, I get why he did it, cool tattoo, whatever, but no, ta no tattoo artist with their salt would actually mix those ashes into the ink. So, all right, like I said, guys, kind of short and sweet today with the Q&As. Um, oh, and someone had asked, where's my book? I'm still shopping I still want to sell the purchase rights for a movie or a series. Absolutely. You know, get the other girl stories out there. Give everybody a chance to benefit from it. So, yeah, that's still in the works and kind of going on. So, I will let you know after it happens. Because I don't want to jinx anything. Just cross your fingers. Send out good vibes. Because, you know, three years of 70s groupie bullshit that everybody's talked about for the past 30, 40 years that we're all tired of or... 30 years and a bunch of untold stories from groupies in the 80s that nobody's heard these stories. And nobody's talked about these bands. So, all right, but yeah, that is still going on. That was kind of a little plug. But okay, you guys, thank you so much to everybody who's made it to the end of the episode. Thank you so much to everybody for asking those questions. And thank you so much to everybody who's just finding your way here and hanging out and commenting and becoming part of the family. Everybody means so, so much to me. And because you mean so much to me, do me one little favor. Watch all the commercials. Go down. Hit that subscribe. Hit that share. If you want to, become a member. Because I'm going to be doing lives for members only. And I'm going to be including the other girls. So, all right, you guys. Thank you again for everything, for the whole channel, for everybody being so awesome. And we'll see you on Thursday. Cheers, big ears. Mm -hmm. <laughs>